for the last 20 years, people in distributed computing have been trying to uh, circumvent the impossibility of consensus or find ways uh, to, to not use consensus. This is Rachid Garoui, a professor of the IC school at UPRFL. And in two previous videos, he showed that consensus was critical for guaranteeing the algorithmic correctness of distributed systems. Unfortunately, the 1985 FLP theorem proves that consensus between different machines that may crash is in general impossible. So what can be done? So there have been two fronts. The first front, based on understanding why the proof holds, consists in doing two things. One of them is making assumptions on the communication delays. As I pointed out, if you don't make any assumption on communication delays, then consensus is impossible. It turns out that a very simple, a very small assumption saying eventually there is a bound, a lower bound and an upper bound on communication delays, even if this bound holds only eventually, and even if it's not known by the machines, then consensus can be solved. The algorithms are not trivial at all, they are slightly expensive, but we can show that consensus is solved and therefore we can build a universal machine. It's going to be expensive in terms of computation, but we can. In fact, Rashid Girawi described the most famous of such algorithms, the Paxos algorithm, in a one data video. There has been another front along this direction saying, if instead of communicating by exchanging messages or by reading or writing in a shared memory, we could, in one atomic step, read something in a memory and modify it based on what we have seen, then we can solve consensus. So this impacts some hardware, impacted some hardware uh, implementations to be able to solve consensus. So this is one approach that is slightly expensive, but it's possible. So basically, the first front of distributed computing research was to determine conditions under which consensus was possible. What's the other one? So the other approach consists in, in giving up on consensus and saying it's too expensive, let's give up on universality, but we still want to understand what is that we can do. So we, we, we start looking for uh, a restricted universality. And again, consensus is helpful because it has been used as a, as a guidance. And to be more concrete, if it is impossible to agree on one value, we could, for example, decide to uh, agree on several values. And this could be a direction because we could say agreeing on one value is impossible, but maybe agreeing on a subset of values is possible. And we could define a restricted notion of universality that we could call k-universality. And we have been able to prove, for example, that if we can solve k-consensus, means agreeing on k-values, we cannot still model one single Turing machine because when k is not equal to 1, the problem is weaker than consensus, but we can implement k different Turing machines, among which one is always highly available and therefore modeling a Turing machine. So th this is a restricted form or uni of universality. In other words, thereby, the whole system will not work exactly like a nice universal Turing machine, but it will be a bit similar to this. Another restricted form of universality goes in this direction, but slightly uh, opposite by saying, if we cannot agree among n machines, let's try to agree among k less than n machines. And again, here we can define different classes of equivalences with k be going from 1 to n. Here, n is the best, 1 is the, the, the worst. And at each, every level of the hierarchy, we can have a class of problems we can solve. And we can show that any problem we could imagine belongs to one of these equivalence classes and has some solution. So this is another direction where we give up on consensus, but not completely. We still somehow parameterize consensus with some k and we define a class of problems we can solve. So more generally, the theorem of impossibility of consensus applies when we consider all computing systems and all problems. However, solutions can be found by considering particular computing systems or when addressing particular problems. Exactly. So either you, you restrict the network or you restrict the set, the set of problems. And both are complementary, and we have uh, 10 or 20 years of research there. We are not completely, we did not solve all problems. There are still a lot of research. But this research is fundamental to understand what kind of beast we get when we put a bunch of machines together. Whether we still get the Turing model or not, and if we don't, what is that we get? Without this understanding, we won't be able to apprehend 
algorithms that are controlling us today. This impossibility result does not apply to Bitcoin because uh, Bitcoin only solves consensus with high probability. It doesn't solve uh, the problem in a deterministic sense. It solves it in a probabilistic sense. There is a probability that everybody in the system will have the same, a high probability that everybody will have the same state. Basically, there, there is always a small probability that, uh, that people don't really agree and uh, a fog happen in the blockchain. So the bad part is that, uh, as we notice, sometimes algorithms make mistakes and they make... Uh, mistakes and these mistakes are amplified by the underlying computing system which as I pointed out was very powerful so when it's a good thing the computer system amplifies the good thing when it's bad a bad mistake the computer system amplifies it and the consequences can be very drastic because we do rely today on algorithms